What's up guys, my name is Nick and this is Key Woodworks. If you are new here, I wanna say thank you for stopping by and welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. But you may notice things look a little different. That's because I'm in my home office today where normally I would be out in the shop making sawdust. Today I'm gonna to be at the computer teaching you guys how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. So I have been a full-time video editor for the past six years now and I use Adobe Premiere on pretty much a daily basis. I know a few tips and tricks that I wanna share with you guys to get you started in the program. Whether you are an absolute beginner with the program, know a thing or two, or you're advanced, I hope this video can help you learn a few things about Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna head over to the computer and we'll get started. All right, guys, I'm at my desk sitting at my computer and before we even open Premiere Pro, I wanna go over one important important thing and that is organization. An organized editor is a fast editor and everybody needs to be a fast editor because the longer it takes you to get a video out, the more you're going to hate it and the more it's going to suck and nobody wants that. So being organized is key and if you go over here to my desktop now, I've got a sample folder set up called Premiere Pro Tut. Double click that, open it up and you'll see multiple folders inside of that folder ranging from audio, footage, output, project file, thumbnail, and tracks. It's pretty obvious what's gonna be inside of those folders. If I had any audio, it would be in the audio folder. I've got some sample footage from my last video, the modern coat rack here in footage. If you haven't seen that video yet, I've got a card up in the top right corner. You can click it and go check that out and then come back to this video. In the output folder, it will hold your finished exported video. The project folder will hold your Premiere Pro project folder and all of your auto saves. And then I've got a thumbnail folder where you're gonna hold all of your JPEGs that you've taken of your final product that you'll use for your thumbnail on YouTube. And then finally, I've got a folder labeled tracks with a couple of files from Epidemic Sounds that I used in my last video, The Modern Coat Rack. Now you don't have to organize everything exactly like I do, but it is great to keep everything organized so you know where it is and you can get to it fast and get it in your project so you can get it done and get it posted on the internet quickly. There's one other thing that you should be doing and that is keeping an assets folder. Here on my machine, I've got a specific drive that has all of my files that I keep for every YouTube video I do. It's got my intro and my end screen and that I keep under a folder called assets. So I know exactly where they are and I can get to them fast and put them in every project that I do. So now that we're organized, let's jump into Premiere Pro. After Adobe Premiere Pro finally loads, you'll be taken to this new window called the new project window. Here you can see all of your old projects and open them from there, or you can select new project, which we want, and then we can browse to our folder that we set up on our desktop here under project file, select that and then name it Tut. Premiere will then open your project and you will have up in the top left a source window, the top right a program window, the bottom left your project window, and the bottom right is your timeline window. Over here in the bottom left in the project window, you'll see import media to start and you'll right click import. There's many ways to import. I like to right click, it just seems to be faster. It will then bring up this dialog box where you can navigate to where your footage is. And since we have everything organized, we're gonna find it right here in our footage file. The great thing about having everything organized, you can simply import this entire folder. After it's done importing, you'll see that now you have what's called a bin in the bottom left project window labeled footage. If you expand that folder, you're gonna see all of your clips. If you double click one of those clips, it will open in the source window and you'll be able to then drag your playhead through the clip and see that entire clip. Now that we have all our footage imported into our project, it's time to start making some timelines or sequences. So let's collapse this folder here and we will right click at a new bin and title it S-E-Q-S. That's gonna stand for sequences. On the sequences folder, we will then click it and then come down here to this new item, new sequence. 
It's then gonna bring up this window that will then let you pick new sequence. And this is gonna be dependent on the footage that you are editing. In my case, I am editing 1080p, 24 frame per second footage. So I'm going to pick DSLR 1080p, 24p. I'm gonna name this sequence Tut and click enter. So now we have a sequence that is ready to go, but we don't have any footage in the sequence. It's time to then grab all of our footage. We're gonna then click, scroll to the bottom, shift click all of them and drag them into our timeline. All right, now that we have all of our footage imported into our timeline, we can see that it is 53 minutes, 34 seconds and seven frames. And that is entirely too long for a YouTube video. So it's time to chop and dice up your footage. Now here's what I wanna talk about next and it is Keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts will save your life and make everything so much easier. Now, everything up until now has been on a Macintosh computer and everything from here on out will still be on a Macintosh. So all of these keyboard shortcuts that I'm gonna be going over are Mac specific, but I'm pretty sure if you just exchange command for control and option for alt, they should translate to all you PC folk. Jumping back into the timeline window, if I press the plus equal sign on my keyboard, it will zoom in on the timeline. If I press the minus and underscore key, it will zoom out. If I press the plus and zoom all the way in to one frame a piece and then press the backslash key, it will show the entire timeline. If I press the backslash again, it goes back to my previous zoomed all the way in. A couple more keyboard keystrokes that you need to know to get around in the timeline. If you wanna to get to the end of your timeline, the end key will go right to the end. If you wanna go back to the very beginning, you can press the home and that will go back home. If you wanna to go to the next clip, you can press the down arrow and that will go to the next clip in your timeline. And if you press up, it will go to the previous clip. If you press the right arrow, it will go one frame at a time ahead in the clip. If you press the left arrow, it will go one frame at a time backwards in the clip. Knowing just those keyboard shortcuts can save you a ton of time editing. Speaking of saving time, let's delete a lot of these clips in the middle of this timeline by dragging and selecting all of these clips and then pressing delete. Now by pressing delete, it's gonna leave a giant gap between this clip and this clip. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but to get rid of it, you can click the space to highlight it and then press delete again and it will move all of the clips forward so that they are all touching. However, there is a faster way to do that. So I'm gonna command Z undo these and then we will reselect them and we will hit shift delete. That is called a ripple delete and it automatically deletes the space in between. So we're now zoomed in on the very first clip in this sequence and we want to find out where we wanna start this clip. So I'm using the playhead to scrub through and this is where I want to start it. Actually, I'm gonna back it up and press spacebar and let it play. And right there, I hit spacebar again to stop it. And this is where I wanna make my first cut. Now in Premiere, there are plenty of ways to make cuts you can come to your tools and hit the razor tool, which is also keyboard shortcut C. So I can press C on the keyboard. It will then bring my razor tool up and I can click on my clip, which will cut both my video and my audio because they are linked together. From here, you see the very first part of the clip is highlighted. You can delete it, which will leave a space, but that's not what we want. So I'm gonna undo that. You can then press V to get your selection tool, highlight it, shift delete, which is your ripple delete, which will get rid of it and bring everything forward. But that's not very fast because that's several keystrokes. So we will command undo, command undo. There's another keyboard shortcut you can use, which if you get your playhead wherever you want a cut, you can use command K. And that will also make a cut wherever your playhead is but that leaves you again with this clip at the front that you need to get rid of. 
But the fastest way to make cuts in Adobe Premiere Pro is by using Q and W. If I were to press Q right now, it would make a cut and remove everything in front of the playhead. If I were to press W, it would make a cut and then remove everything past the playhead. And it ripple deletes for you. So if I were to press Q, it deletes everything before and leaves the rest. Now that that cut's made, I can scrub through and find where I wanna make my next cut to finish this clip. And it's right there, right as I go out of frame. So now I'm gonna press W and then it moves everything up to my next clip. Now I can go accordingly and make all of my cuts. So now I'm all done editing and I need to export this video. Well, Premiere has a ton of options, so I wanna show you what I've been using to get the best export out of Adobe Premiere Pro. So here is my final video ready to be exported. So I will go up here to File, Export, Media. Shortcut is Command-M. And then here we have our export settings. Format, you have all of these options. We are gonna go with H.264 for the web. They have presets that you can pick and we are actually going to pick the YouTube 1080p full HD preset. And then we are going to build off of that. Output name, you can then name it whatever you want and we're gonna put it back on our folder here in the output folder and we will name it Tut Final. And click save. We're gonna make sure it's clicked for export video and export audio. And here is where we are gonna change our preset just a little bit to make it custom. We're gonna scroll down here and check render at maximum depth. Scroll down a little bit more and then we are gonna change the bitrate settings from VBR one pass to VBR two pass. Not to get too technical, it is a variable bitrate with two passes the first pass making one complete pass and then the second pass coming back through and cleaning it up even more. The key here is we want to double our target bit rate to 32. That's going to also jump our maximum bit rate to 32. That's going to give us a much better export. And then also you want to click use maximum render quality and use previews. And then you will click export. And once Premiere is done exporting your video, you'll be able to upload it to YouTube and let everybody enjoy. And that's pretty much all you need to know to get started editing your videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. I mean, it's a pretty simple program if you just start with the basics. I'm planning on making some future videos that will go a lot more in depth with things like color grading and keyframing and cutting to music. And if there's a topic you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you hadn't already, and then turn on notifications so you know when I upload my next video about Adobe Premiere Pro. So until then, we'll see ya.